Tonight, bringing the political star power to the Democratic National Convention. The Obamas take center stage in Chicago. America's ready for a new chapter. We are ready for a president, Kamala Harris. And a new online push to influence the vote. The latest inflation numbers and what they could mean for interest rates. It's a really good sign for Canadian households. Plus, the potential impact of a looming rail strike on Canada's commuters. Definitely it would be a hindrance to everybody's plan. We'll tell you the two specific points in our lives. New research says we age the fastest. And capturing the magic in the sky. The rare spectacle shared around the world. Everybody has got a story about the moon. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Good evening, everyone. The man who made history when he was elected the first African-American president 16 years ago endorsed a fellow Democrat tonight he hopes will make history of her own as the first female president of the United States. If we knock on doors, if we make phone calls, if we talk to our friends, if we listen to our neighbors, if we work like we've never worked before, if we hold firm to our convictions, we will elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States. And right before he spoke, the other half of that political power couple took to the stage, former U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama. You know, we're feeling it here in this arena, but it's spreading all across this country. We love a familiar feeling that's been buried too deep for far too long. You know what I'm talking about. It's the contagious power of hope. And joining us now is CTV's Washington Bureau Chief Joy Malvin. Enjoy the U.S. President tonight acknowledging what he called the confusion and the rancor in the world, but emphasizing the need to come together, even with those who may not be supporters of the party. Absolutely. I, I mean, nobody fires up Democrats that, than the Obamas. Hope and change. I, I mean, voters in America, they are so tired of the negativity. Michelle Obama, she's a superstar uh, with a new take on when they go low, we go high. And of course, Barack Obama had an emotional nod to Joe Biden, calling him not only his vice president, but uh, his, someone who became a very good friend a and acknowledging the fact that he not only did Biden saved democracy once, but he saved it twice by stepping aside, allowing Kamala Harris to to run. Uh, but again, making the point that, you know, we don't have to be so divided as a nation. We can have disagreements. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we all want a better America. We all want a better life. That's what voters want. Um, you know, the, the first black president now making the case and along with his wife uh, for Kamala Harris, who would be the first woman of color to win the presidency. And how exactly did he endorse Kamala Harris? You know, you look back at their friendship. This is a relationship and, a, and an alliance really that goes back 20 years. What exactly did he say about her? I mean, Michelle Obama and, and to a certain extent, uh, Barack Obama too, did mention that her story was in many ways the story of millions of Americans. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a story of immigrant parents, uh, so many people in America. It's a story of working at McDonald's. It's a story of, uh, you know, middle class life and, and trying to get ahead. He spoke about her accomplishments, a, a woman who worked her way up, a senator, a vice president, uh, you know, her, her many, many accomplishments, what she wants to do for Americans, housing, the price of food, groceries, all that sort of thing, what we all worry about uh, in our day to day lives. I, I mean, he's sung her praises, but boy, did he have a few singers for Donald Trump saying that he's obsessed with crowd sizes and, and saying, hey, we've seen this movie before, and we we all know that sequels, they're not very good. All right, Joy Melvin at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago tonight. And speaking of Donald Trump, Obama also took direct aim at the Republican presidential candidate tonight. The people who will decide this election 
are asking a very simple question. Who will fight for me? Who's thinking about my future, about my children's future, about our future together? One thing is for certain, Donald Trump is not losing sleep over that question. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. <laughs> it, 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 it just goes on and on and on. The other day I heard someone compare Trump to the neighbor who keeps running his leaf blower outside your window every minute of every day. <laughs> now, from a neighbor, that's exhausting. From a president, it's just dangerous. And let's get to CTV's chief political correspondent, Vashi Capellos, right now, who is also in Chicago. And Vashi, Michelle Obama once said, as Joy alluded to just minutes ago, that when they go low, we go high. But the Democrats certainly appear to be taking on Trump more pointedly. Yeah, and nobody exemplified that more than Michelle Obama herself tonight, alongside her husband, Barack Obama. That clip that you just played demonstrates very much so what you're hearing from Democrats throughout this entire week, going after Donald Trump very hard, trying to paint that contrast between himself and Kamala Harris. And we're told doing that in anticipation of Kamala Harris's speech on Thursday so she can switch gears and focus more on sort of a forward-looking approach. They also had some help tonight from um, former Republicans, including people who worked for Donald Trump, like Stephanie Grisham, who was his White House press uh, secretary for a number of months, almost a year, actually, between 2019 and 2020. Here's what she had to say about her former boss. On a hospital visit one time when people were dying in the ICU, he was mad that the cameras were not watching him. He has no empathy, no morals, and no fidelity to the truth. He used to tell me, it doesn't matter what you say, Stephanie. Say it enough and people will believe you. One interesting note Omar picking up on Obama's speech is that when the crowd started to boo during his, some of his descriptions of and some of the things he was saying about Donald Trump, he said, don't boo go out and vote. Kind of interesting to contrast that with the, the length to which he went to talk about Donald Trump and, and sort of characterize him as well. Obama and other speakers, of course, playing a key role at this convention. We also know that digital content creators are playing a significant role at this convention. And in the first Vashi, more than 200 of them are getting creator credentials to give them special access. And five of them, who collectively have more than 24 million followers, also have speaking slots. By comparison, by the way, there were 70 content creators at the Republican convention, the RNC. So what does this tell us about the Harris media strategy? And what have you noticed on the convention floor? Well, it's very much geared at young people, that 18 to 24 demographic that is traditionally very hard to capture and even harder to get out to motivate to vote. Some preliminary data from public opinion polling shows that Harris has been able to mount a more sizable lead over Trump in that demographic, but they're hoping these influencers will do a lot of the work for them. Have a listen to one influencer who I can tell you was on the floor because they have a special spot on the floor of this convention where whereas print reporters aren't even allowed down there. It's about time. Creators are like a huge messenger in the news economy today. We share stories with the public just like news anchors do. And in many ways, indisputably, we reach more people. 
So here again, Omar, I'll circle back to what we heard from Obama because he offered a reality check on some of that. He talked about how, yes, there are memes. Yes, there is momentum, but it is essentially a very, very close race. And Michelle Obama echoed that 11 weeks to go. That is virtually no time when it comes to American politics, particularly an American election. And you heard both of them really try to drill down that message to the Democratic base tonight. U.S. Decision Day, November 5th. Tadashi, thank you so much. And a quick note that CTV National News will be broadcasting live from Chicago on Thursday when Kamala Harris formally accepts her party's nomination. The economy is always a key theme for voters on both sides of the border. And today, Canada's inflation rate cooled to its lowest level in three years. CTV's Annie Bergeron-Oliver on what it could mean for the Bank of Canada's next interest rate decision. Inflation is coming down across the board, putting slightly less pressure on cash-strapped consumers. Less goods and services that consumers are purchasing these days are facing high inflation, and that's a really good sign for Canadian households that are still, you know, to some extent, just challenged by, you know, elevated interest rates. And the cost of electricity, travel tours, and passenger vehicles is on a steep decline, helping to drive inflation down to 2.5% in July, the lowest since March 2021. It's no longer a situation of, of crisis and inflation. But while price pressures are easing, the sticker price of many goods, including food, isn't. There are certain things that I won't really buy. Some of the fruits and vegetables are not up to what they should be price-wise. All day beverage. Tasso Vasilis owns a bar and grill and feels the same way. He hasn't seen any relief in his day-to-day -day costs, making margins even smaller. But the wages. The food, the transportation, um, electricity, just everything. And you can only charge, you can't charge like $14 for a cup of coffee. So you just, sometimes you got to bite the bullet on some stuff. But economists say these are all signs the economy is slowing. And that is likely to mean more interest rate cuts from the Bank of Canada. For now, it's encouraging evidence. It keeps the Bank of Canada on track with the conviction necessary to cut again by a quarter point in September. We have at least one or two more cuts coming thereafter toward the end of this year. Consumers with mortgages or high debt levels could soon feel even more relief if the Bank of Canada, Omar, cuts rates as expected on September 4th. All right, any thanks. Temporary foreign workers in Montreal will not be allowed to take up some low-wage jobs for the next six months. Quebec is implementing the freeze because of what the Premier is calling a, quote, explosion in the number of non-permanent residents. 300,000 temporary immigrants, 300,000 additional people. So, of course, it, ha it has a major impact on services. François Legault insists the move will help preserve the French language in Montreal, but there are already concerns it will lead to labor shortages. When manufacturers in Montreal or across Quebec choose to recruit internationally, it's really because they can't find any candidates or resources here that have either the skill set or the interest. The pause impacting 12,000 people goes into effect September 3rd. Last night, we told you about the potential economic hit of a looming rail strike. But the work stoppage could also stop others from getting to work. CTV's Quebec Bureau Chief Genevieve Beauchemin on the commuter impact. For tens of thousands of riders, this commuter train line is a lifeline. But a looming strike or lockout could grind it to a halt just as summer vacations end. I don't know how I'm going to commute. Definitely it would be a hindrance to everybody's plan. If no deal is struck before Thursday, CN and Canadian Pacific Kansas City, or CPKC, are headed for a work stoppage. Workers, including dispatchers, heading to the picket line would stall the bulk of freight traffic, but also slow the flow of commuters. The federal labor minister met with the railways and unions seeking to resolve a conflict that could badly bruise the Canadian economy. Some via rail operations would have to be suspended. And in Montreal, three exo commuter train lines linking the city to the suburbs could be forced to stay off the rails. Busy coming and coming back from, from school, it's usually quite busy. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Contingency plans are in the works for shuttles to take over part of the load. 
a train is really a, it's a really efficient mode of transportation for moving thousands of people on long distances uh, with comfort uh, without encountering road congestion so it will be a, a, a great challenge to try to palliate uh, this in vancouver and toronto two transit authorities and riders are bracing for the stoppage and that has some making backup plans like working from home but the clock is ticking down louder and louder with just a couple of days left to avoid what could be an unprecedented service shutdown. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Montreal. Calls for an end to the war in Gaza are growing louder tonight after Israel found remains of more hostages. Bodies of six men kidnapped by Hamas on October 7th were retrieved from Gaza. Five of them were already known to have died in captivity. Bibi and the government is killing the hostages, uh, literally one by one. We don't want more dead hostages coming home. Most importantly, the war must end. And Israeli military continued to bomb Gaza. Airstrikes hit a market and a school, killing at least 19 people today as the U.S. Secretary of State left the Middle East without a timeline on a ceasefire deal. There is some reassuring news tonight coming from the World Health Organization after recent warnings about Mpox. Mpox is not the new COVID. It stressed that despite Mpox being designated a global health emergency, the risk to the general public is low. The COVID-19 pandemic killed more than 7 million people globally, while this Mpox outbreak has claimed more than 500 lives in Africa. Countries hit hardest could start vaccinations within days. Coming up, a luxury condo that prompted a government grilling on Parliament Hill. Plus, the best of the Blue Moon sightings. Officials in Ottawa appearing at a parliamentary committee defended the government's purchase of a $9 million condo for Canada's Consul General in New York City. But the opposition wasn't convinced. CTV's Rachel Aiello has the details. This piece of luxury real estate in the world's skinniest skyscraper, just steps from Central Park, is under fire in Ottawa. The federal government bought the $9 million condo on Billionaires Row to house Canada's Consul General in New York, a post currently held by former journalist Tom Clark. Today... Treasury and procurement officials defended the purchase, telling MPs that before settling on the swanky spot in Steinway Tower, they looked at a range of properties. The lowest cost is not always the best value. While deferring many questions to Global Affairs Canada, officials revealed that higher approval wasn't needed before putting in an offer, as it came under the federal government's $10 million transaction limit. The government says the move was necessary, as the previous residents needed major repairs in order to meet federal standards and be suitable to host official events. Though opposition MPs who forced these hearings weren't buying it. This excessive, per this opulent purchase, uh, was, this, was this not something that merited um, the awareness of the minister? Why does he have to have all of these luxury amenities? The old Upper East Side Manhattan residents hit the market last week after Ottawa got an impartial appraisal of its value. The 12-room Park Avenue apartment is listed for $13 million. If it sells for asking, it would more than pay for the new condo. But until a big spending buyer comes along, Canadian taxpayers are carrying the cost of owning two consular residences in the Big Apple. Do I think it was a smart move on their part? Absolutely not. I think I would have waited for the spring and the fall. At a time when many Canadians can't afford a home, MPs want the Consul General to answer for his accommodation upgrade, though Clark's committee appearance has yet to be scheduled. Rachel Aiello, CTV News, Ottawa. Still ahead. The two specific points in life where the impact of aging is most dramatic. We'll have new data coming up. If you have a tip on stolen cars in Toronto, you may be in for a cash reward. Anonymously saying something to Toronto Crime Stoppers about an auto theft crime not only keeps our community safe, but it could also save someone's life. Toronto Police and Crime Stoppers are teaming up to offer up to $5,000 for helping investigators catch the culprits behind auto thefts. 
The reward will only be in place until September 30th. The world's oldest person has died. Maria Brañas Morera passed away peacefully at a nursing home in Spain yesterday at the age of 117. Born March 4, 1907, she once credited luck and good genetics to her long life. Meanwhile, a new study from the journal Nature Aging has shown that on a molecular level, we age in two major bursts at approximately 44 years old, then again at 60. The research says that the prevalence of aging-related diseases and mortality risk accelerates after these specific time points. And more than two years after Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck got married, the couple appears to have called it quits. The singer and actress filed for divorce from the actor today in Los Angeles, according to court documents. The pair has been on and off for more than two decades and has become one of Hollywood's biggest power couples, nicknamed Benifer. After the break, the global snapshots of a phenomenon that flooded the night sky. A spectacle in the night sky this week has brought the world together. CTV's Garrett Berry on the images of the rare lunar event. Seen around the world, from Germany to Paris to Sydney, another celestial spectacle. It's one part super because the moon is just a touch closer to Earth on its orbit, and one part blue not because of its actual hue, but because it's the third full moon in a season that will have four of them. It's captured the imagination of stargazers everywhere. I feel like I could reach out my hand and touch it, says one fan in southwest China. It's a good day to ask the moon to bring us plenty, said a woman in Caracas in Venezuela. Who needs it more than us? Everybody likes the moon. You can see detail with the unaided eye and easily with binoculars. It's a fan favorite. Poetry has been written about it, stories, murder mysteries. I mean, you name it. Everybody has got a story about the moon. Paul Delaney has been watching the moon and the stars for decades. He spent years as the director of the observatory at York University. The universe is full of majesty. It's full of mystery. It's full of wonder. And it's free to observe. Still, at this point in time, you can be in your backyard anywhere around the planet, and you can share that experience. The super blue moon peaked last night, but there's still plenty to see tonight, with the moon about 98% full. And another super moon is just around the corner, coming mid-September. Garrett Berry, CTV News, St. John's. The object of much fascination and mystery. That's a snapshot of this Tuesday for all of us at CTV National News. Thank you for watching and good night.